Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Well, we have now the third entry for this particular series. Thank you as always for your suggestions on here. Please keep them coming. I'm probably going to do about two more throughout the week. And then I'll give it a little bit of rest a couple, another couple of weeks before doing some more new ones on there. And part of the reason why I picked this one was because normally I wouldn't pick a cryptid or monster that's more let's say familiar like anything involving a large wolf man type monster on there it just seemed too unoriginal but what made me pick this one was in doing some research on it I found myself actually becoming very interested in its particular tale the fact that there is a creature like this that apparently roamed the earth a couple hundred of years back and we're talking about an error somewhere around the 1700s, mid 1700s or so, and apparently killed close to a hundred people. And the fact that there were so many stories of encounters with this creature and failed, failed um, assassination attempts or failed killing attempts of this creature, it was actually kind of, I guess for lack of a better term, riveting. Um, until finally the ending came about and sure enough the creature was stopped so the fact that I couldn't essentially quote unquote put this book down after I was researching this creature um, it made me realize you know hey this is definitely something to share with everybody here because hopefully you'll be able to find this particular monster even though it's not very original like the other ones I've recently chronicled, it is still though a very, very fascinating, interesting story. So, this particular monster is called the Beast of Gavaldon. I hope I'm saying that right, but it's called the Beast of Gavaldon. And essentially, it's like this it's probably the closest wolfman type creature we've ever had in existence. And part of the reason comes from several very interesting facts that I'll denote here in a few minutes. So again, this particular monster is called the Beast of Gavaldon. And again, you have to go to like the mid-1700s, you uh, somewhere around 1764. And for about three years, this particular monster held the nation of France in captivity. So powerful were its attacks and so fearful was its reputation that even a king, King Louis, uh, Louis the Fifteenth, got involved. I mean, that's how serious this particular creature was. So, so what is the Beast of Gavaldon? Uh, basically, I mean, you'll see pictures throughout uh, this particular video, and you'll see that again. It's not very original looking. Uh, basically, it's just your average wolf. But what made this wolf so distinctive was the fact that it was much larger than your average wolf. Your wolf on average is probably about the size of a dog and in some cases maybe a larger dog but this particular wolf was almost the size of a bear and in fact I say wolf in a loose sense because it could actually be something else entirely most people say that it's a mixture of something else like it's a mixture of a wolf and a dog or it's a mixture of a wolf and a lion or it's a mixture of a wolf and a bear because of the fact that it was so large again it measured somewhere around six feet across and on its stance just standing on its on its four legs um, it was much taller than your average dog it had a very very impressive uh, physique on here in fact this is the best description that I've read on there it says the beast is a quadruped about the size of a horse it reminds witnesses of a bear, hyena, wolf, and panther all at once. It has a long wolf-like or pig-like snout aligned with large teeth. The ears are small and round, lying close to the head. The neck is long and strong. The tail somewhat resembles the long tail of a panther, but it is so thick and strong that the beast uses it as a weapon, knocking men and animals down with it. Anyone struck by the tail reports that it hits with considerable force. The, the feet of the beast are the hardest yet to describe. Some say that it has cloven hooves or that each digit is tipped with a hoof. Others say that the claws are so heavy, thick, and formidable that they merely resemble hooves. So again, this is a big amalgamation of various powerful animals. You know, a wolf, a bear, potentially a hyena, a panther, 
whatever it is, it was not your average wolf, but it definitely had wolf-like characters, characteristics just essentially maxed to the extreme so very very frightening creature and there were multiple tales of encounters with this creature that led it to again be one of the most feared creatures of its time uh, whenever it was uh, roaming the area of France during those three years or so so what are the stories associated with the creature and the encounters well the first one and the very, very first one is attributed to, again, 1964, and there was a young woman who apparently saw the beast as she was tending cattle near her farm. Uh, the beast apparently came out of a forest near her farm, and she saw the beast, and the beast saw her. By the way, I keep saying the beast because, again, its name is Beast of Gebauden, but its nickname that it's apparently had in all of its re in all the research that I did is it's called the Beast. So, again, very, very fitting name, I guess you could call it. The fact that here you have a creature that um, has a unique name, the Beast of Gebauden, but for all intents and purposes, most people just refer it to the Beast, so I'll just do it here as well. So the, uh, this beast, again, saw the young woman, and she saw it, and the, the minute that it saw her, it charged straight to her. And fortunately, there were some bulls in the herd that she was actually tending to, in the herd of cattle, and naturally, either by force of protection or just by force of instinct, they in turn just ran, just I guess stupidly started charging the beast itself and they actually managed to keep it at bay and they managed to drive it off on there. So that was the very first reported instance and she was actually a very lucky young woman because um, she was one of the few to have actually survived. It was shortly after this first encounter that actually the first victim who was reported, and this was also a young woman, a 14-year-old named by Janae Boulet, and she was uh, the first official victim, the first person killed by this beast. How they attributed to her, I don't know. Um, how the beast was blamed for this, I don't know. It must have been by the fact that um, the telltale sign of the beast uh, uh, and, and the way it attacked was it would essentially rip a person's throat out completely. And that was its mark. That was its telltale sign, which is, again, very distinctive because most other animals you would think of, you know, like a bear, it would just slash and claw lions. Probably the same on there. This particular thing, whatever it was, all it did was just rip the throat out of, of of the person that it's trying to attack on there and then that'd be it there'd be that person would be dead on there so it took about several months but there were more attacks on there and the attacks were so frequent that again the population in and around that area um, were completely frightened by this fact on there in fact again this got so he so heavy that by the next year um, there were probably a couple of dozen killings at that time that King Louis the fifteenth um, actually got involved on there. He hired two professional, um, I guess you could call them wolf hunters, um, to essentially try to have this thing killed on there. And again, that shows how important um, this beast was to, I guess, the safety and uh, the... I guess, you know, again, the populace that's associated, they were so frightened of this creature that they called on their government to take action, and he stepped in at that point. So he gave a reward on there, and he essentially hired, again, these two uh, professional wolf hunters. One of them was the name Jean Charles, who is a long name, is Jean Charles Marc Antoine Vamisle de Enoval. So I'll just call him John Charles for now. And then his son, Jean-Francois. And they arrived there early in 1965. And they had no less than eight bloodhounds. Eight bloodhounds with them. All trained in wolf hunting. Because they were going to hunt this thing. And they were going to uh, do their job. Think of it like, I guess you could call them bounty hunters of sorts. I mean, they were there to do their job and to kill this thing on there. And they tried. They apparently, over the next four months, they uh, tracked wolves all around the area there in France. 
any particular trail that led to a wolf. They tracked them and they killed those wolves and all of them with the hope that this could be the wolf, this beast that was essentially terrorizing the area. But unfortunately it was not. Um, the attacks continued on there. So much so that the king um, hired someone else named Francois Antoine, uh, a different person on there. And he hired them to essentially try to uh, kill the beast as well. So finally, you have to fast forward a couple of months now because this was early in 19, I mean 1765. Now you're going into about September of 1765. And Antoine had found some more wolves and killed some more wolves. And in fact, he killed a large gray wolf that measured about uh, 31 inches high about six feet long and weighed about 130 pounds and he was convinced that this was the actual beast by this point the beast had been uh, murdered several dozen people again this gets close, this gets the idea that there were close to about a hundred people that were killed by this beast so he was ecstatic he was uh, praised at the fact that yes this was the actual beast on there that was killed and it, he even was so proud of this fact that he stuffed the beast and he presented it. He made an official statement. He said, We declare by the present report signed from our hand, we never saw a big wolf that could be compared to this one, which is why we estimate this could be the fearsome beast that caused so much damage. And uh, this also led to the fact that people were convinced that this was the beast because there were apparently scars on the body of this killed beast and stuffed beast that were done by some of the people that survived so apparently not only was that young woman the one i just mentioned the first time the first victim i mean i'm sorry the first attack was by the young woman who survived not only was she the only survivor apparently there were others out there as well and those that survived who inspected this stuffed beast uh, were able to recognize some of the scars that they themselves inflicted on the beast trying to defend it. So the wolf was presented, uh, whatever this thing was, was presented and celebrated around and Antoine was essentially um, given a hero status. He got a large amount of money on there. And then you go about a couple of months later. So again, this happened in September. Now it's December of the... Uh, of the no I'm sorry actually this is a couple years later so again everything is back to normal people are happy they suddenly think to themselves my goodness the fear is over this beast is dead uh, whatever it killed in terms of uh, close to 100 people we no longer have to fear anything cut to four years later and another beast returned so people now suddenly realize that there wasn't just one beast of Godalvin there were apparently two of them on there where this other creature came from, nobody knows. People surmise that it could have been a mate. People surmise that it could have been an offspring of sorts that grew up. But whatever happened on December 2nd, 1769, again about a good four years later, um, uh, this another very similar beast attacked and injured two men and uh, two, uh, about a dozen other more deaths were suddenly attributed to this particular beast. It finally took another hunter this one by the name of John Chastel and he was essentially able to bring this beast down he shot and killed this beast ironically enough using a silver bullet because apparently everyone else had used ordinary bullets on there and everybody that tried before to kill it um, including the Antoine who was able to do the stuff uh, the, the stuffed uh, wolf-like being and was able to kill it with ordinary bullets well apparently um, this other hunter John Chastel he used a silver bullet for the first time again linking to the fact that this could be a wolf man of some sort but he used a blessed silver bullet and the animal died and in fact whenever uh, they wanted to prove that this was another beast as well of Godalvin when they opened up the stomach of the second beast they found human remains within it so sealing the fact that there were not just one but two beasts of Godalvin and that's it that's the story itself very very fascinating again the fact that here you have something a wolf-like creature of some sort something that 
was much larger than your average wolf, the size of a horse, the size of a bear. Very, very intimidating. The fact that it was able to successfully hunt and kill so many people, I can definitely understand how it would be gripped. Uh, it would grip essentially uh, the nation itself. How it would make f uh, fear a very central topic within everybody's mind out there. Who would want to roam at night whenever they knew that something like this was out there that it could potentially stalk you? And it was uh, very, very good at what it does. In fact, um, these are some of the reports associated with the beast. Um, those that I guess that survived were able to claim what they saw and hear. So this beast, the way it stalked its prey, it apparently hugged the ground like it crawled. But the way it crawled, it successfully crawled in a very quick and stealthy and deadly manner. Uh, imagine how creepy that is because all you need is some tall grass around you and you would never hear this thing coming. It would just, uh, you would get probably that sense, as usually associated that sixth sense, that there's something around you, something watching you, something really interested in you, and then that's it, and then it would pounce on you. So that, so yeah, people that were stalked by this creature and survived were stating that it, it, it essentially crawled with its belly nearly to the ground on there. Another, um, person that saw this creature stated that it was able to actually get up on its rear legs essentially like a bear it would actually climb up on its on its rear legs and it would walk and in fact um, the part part of the report was that this farmer saw this creature crossing a river and when the creature realized that the river was kind of too strong to crawl to cross on four legs not a problem it just went on its back two legs and it walked across just like any other human would. How freaky would that be? Again, to see something like this in the far distance, something far larger than usual. No doubt probably sensing that you're watching it, but not really interested in you at the time. All it was was just crossing the river. And then, just like you would expect a normal wolf or dog to just waddle or paddle over, no, no, this creature got up on its rear legs and it walked over. In fact, so powerful were its legs um, that one other person stated, and they were actually able to measure uh, based on the footprints that this creature left, they were actually able to measure its leap. When it was in a running stance, like when it was running and sprinting towards its target, so powerful were its legs that the that the that the length of distance between each footprint when it was running was 28 feet in length so again if you measured one set of footprints touching the ground and then the next set of footprints touching the ground as it was running at full speed um, it measured 28 feet in distance very very powerful stuff I mean here you have a creature that would by far be uh, probably the fastest strongest runner of any creature out there in existence nothing else would even be close on there and then part of a um, supernatural type uh, story associated with this beast which again ties to the idea of it being more like a wolf man type that it actually was a man that converted into a wolf um, in and around that time period um, there was three ladies that stated that about their experience they stated that they were actually walking um, probably towards the day because the story didn't say anything about it happening at night and so they were watching walking towards the day almost to a woodland type area and on their way they passed a church and then when they were about to get to the woods um, in that near and around that area a quote-unquote tanned stranger um, appeared out of nowhere uh, probably a gentleman like stranger of sorts and asked them if he could walk them safely through the woods and sensing on their end that, that this you know could be this was strange they got that sixth sense again that something was not right they politely refused uh, walking safe you know walking them toward the woods on there and they instead turned the other way but before they did the before they left on there this man lightly touched one of the ladies with his hand and the lady that saw this reported that the man's hand the top part of it was covered with fur on there and some soldiers that arrived 
there in that area shortly after the ladies left and this was some, you know the tan this t quote unquote tan stranger was no longer around uh, right around that time so he immediately left but some soldiers arrived shortly thereafter and they arrived a little bit panic stricken and they told the ladies um, something that they already knew they said do not enter the woods at all because this creature this beast of Godalvin um, was reported in and around that area a little earlier you know, before their time, before they arrived there. So they quickly added 2 plus 2, the fact that um, here you had this very strange man who probably, you know, again, seemed Gentile, seemed polite, but there was something a little bit off about him and how he um, asked them to uh, go into the woods with him so that way he could safely place him through the woods. And yet the fact that um, one of them saw his hand and it was covered with fur on the top and then these men arriving and stating that this creature was around, they immediately tied that man with that creature, which again, again, lends to like a supernatural type aspect to the story on there. So very, very creepy stuff. This is again about the closest one could think of this beast of Godalvin as it being a wolf-like creature and potentially a real-life wolf man. It all depends on how far you want to believe that story and that life story that I mentioned to you as well. So has anybody else heard of this particular monster, this beast, this beast of Godalvin? Again, very frightening, uh, very interesting story on there. This beast of, G of Gavaldon, again, uh, rightfully so, was just simply called the moniker the beast. If anyone knows any particular the stories or any tales associated with this monster, please you know share them below. Apparently it has a rich history there in France, so if anyone is in around that area, and knows about this particular creature, or more importantly, any recent sightings associated with this creature, because um, as as hot and heavy as the stories were during those three years in the 1700s, that was about it. Uh, there was nothing else anywhere in the 1800s, 1900s, or anything now on there. So if anyone has any other stories associated with this creature more presently, more present date oriented then please please you know share them below on there so all right everybody thanks again as always take care